But I'm delighted to say that our French champion, Francois Xavier Jolie, lists his interests as things that mere mortals can identify with. He likes DIY and gardening, and he brews his own beer. Although being French, it's probably lager. Uh, <laughs> Francois Xavier is down to earth, not only in his hobbies, but also his work. He's a PhD student in ecosystem ecology at the French National Centre for Scientific Research in Montpellier. He looks at the soil and the wider environment and how it's being affected by the changes to the number of species. Now, I'm thinking of getting in to investigate Fame Lab ecosystem and how it's changed by having ever more international participants. For now, though, it's all about short-term survival of one species. The 2015 winner, and, you know, it's just a little bit after 2015, uh, for Fame Lab France, Francois Xavier Jolie. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of a corrupted society. It's the end of September, and in forest, all those leaves that have been hardworking all spring and summer to capture light, to fix carbon dioxide, and to produce oxygen are finally retiring. The wind gently blows them away, and they end up on the soil, but with one last and very important mission to accomplish, getting decomposed. If these leaves fail this mission, the nutrients that they contain won't be able to go back to the soil and be used again by plants. And the carbon that they are made of won't be able to go back to the atmosphere and be used again for photosynthesis. But relax. Fortunately, they get help from many organisms called decomposers, mostly composed of these tiny but numerous bacteria and fungi who, by throwing around their powerful enzymes around them like knives, cut the long and complex molecules of the leaves into smaller ones, ingest them, and then release the nutrients to the soil and the carbon to the atmosphere. <sighs> Mission accomplished. But just like in the headquarters of FIFA, corruption <laughs> is everywhere. <laughs> Some of the leaves of good species are rich rich in nutrients, rich in tasty compounds, thanks to which they can bribe the decomposers and get decomposed in just a few months. While, in contrast, leaves of poor species, thick and dry, with almost nothing to offer to the decomposers, have to wait long years to get fully decomposed. But, fortunately, some other soil organisms, like millipedes, decided to take action against this terrible inequality. They are known as transformers. <laughs> yeah, they do sound like superheroes. And they actually have a superpower. This millipede have the power to transform different leaves, rich leaves like poor leaves, into an identical structure. A structure that is the same for all leaves. A structure that gives a fresh start to all leaves in the race for decomposition. This amazing structure is millipedes poo. <laughs> well, yeah. When leaves are chewed by the millipede, slightly digested, and then returned to the soil as poo, inequalities <laughs> disappear. Rich leaves see their attractiveness slightly reduced when the one of poor leaves increases a lot, making them, in the end, equal to attract decomposers. So, millipedes, by taking from the rich and giving to the poor, fight this terrible inequality and become the real Robin Hood. <laughs> right, he was very composed about being decomposed, but what will our judges make of him? Yeah. Um, why should we worry about millipede and their poo? Uh, well, is there a practical application? I can think of one, but... Uh... Well, actually, um, this decomposition is a really important function of the ecosystem. If decomposition stopped, soil would be infertile, and there would be no more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. No more at all, which means that plants could, would stop growing. So decomposition is a really important thing. And these millipedes, by changing the way the leaves attract the decomposers, change the way decomposition happens and change 
the, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the, the way the soil are more or less fertile. So this is really important to understand and to know what they do. Okay. Uh, can you explain the impact of climate change on your decomposition? Is that affecting the way it does? With Definitely. Climate change can affect decomposition in many ways. Decomposition is mostly controlled by the climatic conditions, so the, the amount of humidity and the temperature of the, of the environment, which will have a direct impact on decomposers. But it can also have an indirect direct impact on, for instance, the species of millipedes that would be in a forest, because some of them are really endemic, which means that they live only in one restricted area. And if by climate change we lose one species uh, of millipede, it might have an impact on decomposition. Which audience would you really focus this talk on? I'm sorry, could Wh you? Which audience would you really want to focus this talk on? Everyone. <laughs> I think. I, the correct I, answer is Cheltenham International Festival <laughs> Fame Lab Final. <laughs> <laughs> Right, that <laughs> and everyone else. I've, this is actually what I do, in, that, this is my research. I go to the forest, I collect millipedes, I put them in boxes, I feed them leaves, I collect their poo, and I make measurements on their poo. <laughs> so... <laughs> this, this is the first reason why I want everyone to know about millipedes. And the second reason is that, that yeah, they, Millipedes can have a strong impact on the, on the environment, and climate change can impact them. Often when we think about climate change, we think about the poor polar bear drifting on a piece of ice. But he's not the only one that is at risk. Or the millipedes that are living <laughs> in our forest are also at risk. <laughs> so for the millipedes and their poo, we should do something about climate change. <laughs> okay, I think they're laughing with you, not laughing at you. Millipedes at hyperspeed, Francois Xavier Jolie.